All right, please be joined by our, our good friend, Coach Luis from Hillgrove, legend of NFL films slash uh, guy that always brings some good knowledge for us. So, Coach, uh, always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us and uh, excited to hear what you got to say, man. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. I've enjoyed uh, – I'm not up to date, but I'm, I've enjoyed the all of these and I've had a chance to go in and watch and taking some good notes from some good coaches, uh, not just from the state of Georgia, but really from kind of throughout, you know, high school football around the country. So I've uh, really enjoyed it. I'm glad to be a part of it. Coach, let's get rolling, man. What you got? All right. So, you know, we're going to talk a little bit today um, about ways to create layups for your quarterback. Um, You know, two seasons in a row now, um, I've had sophomore quarterbacks, and um, that didn't happen very often, but I, I was kind of doing the math on it the other day. and Really, in the past five years, um, there's only been one season where I've had a returning starter at quarterback. And some years we've been more successful than others, and, and sometimes we throw the ball well, and sometimes we're, you know, steadily trying to find a way to be successful throwing the ball and, and you hear a lot of coaches talk about creating layups and giving the quarterback easy throws to get them a lot of confidence, but also to get the sticks moving and um, or to keep them moving, you know, on, on third down. So wanted to take an opportunity and kind of talk about one of those uh, one of the ways that we create layups for our quarterbacks. Um, you know, we, again, it's all about increasing confidence and efficiency for the quarterback um, to keep the offense on schedule and uh, and rolling along. So when we talk about layups in our staff room and and with our kids and our install, we talk about easy reads and easy throws. You don't have to be a division one prospect to make these throws. There's a lot of great concepts out there um, that I love that, um, you know, when you've got the kid with the big arm and the, the real high football IQ, that you and you got the great guys to throw it to. You can put in some of these things and really get a lot accomplished. Um, but that's not always what we have. So we try to find things that allow us to be efficient, regardless of what our personnel looks like um, or, or really who we're playing. Um, you know, part of that is, is it has to be a versatile concept. Um, it has to be versatile versus multiple coverages where you're going to feel confident calling it all the time or almost all of the time. Um, it needs to be versatile within the structure of the offense. You know, there's times where we're 10P, times where we're in 11P, and times when we're in 12P. Um, and, you know, regardless of what personnel grouping we're in, regardless of what formation we're in, um, we feel like our layups as much as possible need to be able to fit into any of those categories or any of those structures. Um, And then the other thing is we feel like it needs to be versatile for down and distance and for field zone, right? These are great possession and 10 calls to start a drive. They can also be used in the red zone. They could be used on third and medium, third and short. Um, And in other places, you know, again, talk about versatility is second and long. These are great opportunities to get yourself back close to the sticks and get yourself back on schedule. And then, you know, if you've got athletes, Right, a, a, a good layup, a good fast break with the right kick catching the ball or the, the right athlete in space can easily turn into a dunk, right? And that's that's what we talk to our kids about all the time. Um, is, is as coaches, we try to create these opportunities for them to get these freebies. And then the flip side is we tell the athletes, it's your job now to go make the most of it and I'm turning this layup into a dunk. So we're going to focus on um, part of our sprint out package, part of our movement stuff. Um, that that we use in our system and uh, what we call Waco and, and Frisco, okay? Both versions are versions of a sprint out smash concept. We could do these out of two back. We could do them out of, uh, you know, two by two, three by one, really almost any formation structure we want. We can use motion to get ourselves um, to these concepts, okay? So we'll start. Um, just kind of with, with the basics, right, is, is when we install these concepts, they are alignment-based route concepts. You need to know, based on your alignment, what your job is, right? Um, we have locked concepts where the Z always has the post or the Y always has the dig. 
this is alignment based, whether you are the Z or the X or the H or even the tailback. If we wind him up out wide, when this concept is called, you have to know this is what the number one receiver does. This is what the number two receiver does and so on. Uh, we can tie this concept to our sprint out. We can tie it to our boot protection, um, which gives us some versatility. We could, in theory, tie it to a quick game. It's not something we do. We probably should um, because, again, it is efficient for us. But we like moving the launch point with our quarterbacks um, as well and, and not letting them just always have to sit in that pocket and make decisions. So, so we like attaching it to our sprint out in our boot. Like I said, we can attach it to any personnel grouping, any formation, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to bring it to the clinic, because whether you're a spread guy or a wing T guy, regardless of what you're doing offensively, this can fit in what you do. Um, and, and that's, you know, it's something that when I was a 21P, 13P, I formation under center, we didn't have a ton of sprint out when we got in our small gun package, but this was the thing, one of the things that we would carry to, to find some easy throws for our quarterback. Um, we, we were almost having to play in a little bit of a world that wasn't our natural identity as an offense. So uh, that's, again, part of why I bring this uh, to the table. And it's not groundbreaking. It's not like I'm doing something new or different. But I do think it's something that, um, you know, that, that anybody can incorporate. And if they are doing it, maybe I give them something new. I mean, if they're not doing it, maybe it just adds to, to their, their arsenal of, of what they can do, okay? Um, so on Frisco, okay, the motion player is always a flat route. Now, we don't have to motion to run Frisco, but that is, again, one of the rules that we teach because this is straight from the install that we give our kids is if we tag Frisco, the motion man, regardless of where he starts or where, the, where he finishes or where the ball snapped, you know, in his motion, he is always going to be a flat route. So we ask our players, and if we're going to use motion that week for that concept, we make sure our guys are reminded, hey, the motion guy's the flat, know where you fit in off of him. So to start, give you a look at what we call Waco, okay? Uh, we call it Waco because it is a witch and a corner route, Okay. I'm a corner. Sometimes we call them a seven, just so as not to be confused. We're talking about a corner back when we're talking to our kids. OK, um, but, you know, we, we tell our quarterbacks and we've done some different things with the way we've handled our protection and our sprint out. And you see a lot of guys now that will put a gift route on the back side. We've done that some. We don't always do it. Um, you know, part of it, again, is based on how we're choosing to protect it and the, the, the version of sprint out that we're carrying from season to season uh, based on our kids and then what we think fits them and their athleticism up front the best. Uh, but we tell our quarterback, if the gift is open, you're going to rip. If the gift is closed, you're going to get our concept. So it's as simple as it could be with this, with, uh, with smash, right? You're going to get your eyes on the flat defender or on the corner. If you're getting some type of a two high structure and he's going to tell you where to go with the football. You know, we tell him, if you're getting cushion, if you get a corner that is above the hard deck or a guy that has a body language and an intent to bail, then you be prepared to on your third step, rip the witch route right now um, and, and get it out and let your athlete go be a player in space. OK, for the witch, we tell that we tell him we don't need him to release full speed. It's, it's not an M.O.R. It doesn't have to look like an M.O.R doesn't need to look like he's trying to take the top off. We want him to tempo it a little bit. We want him to attack the cornerback's outside hip. So he's going to set his landmark at the outside hip of the corner. If you're getting soft coverage, corners inside leverage, you know, some type of quarters or something like that, then we're going to set our landmark at two yards outside of our original alignment. But if that corner is head up to outside, we're basically aiming – one yard outside of his hip, and we're going to push it to five yards. At five yards, I'm going to hinge, show my numbers to the quarterback, and we use the phrase work open. It's not an out route, um, although it looks like that sometimes. We almost want our guys to shuffle to the sideline, and we tell them the more space you have to the sideline, the, the faster your work can be, right? If, if we call this on the left hash, and, you know, we reduce our splits a little bit so the quarterback doesn't have to make a crazy throw. 
And, and that receiver knows that when he comes out of his break, he can shuffle with some tempo. Um, but if, if the ball's in the middle of the field and we're tighter into the boundary with the route, then he's not going to have as much space to work. So he's going to be a little bit slower. Okay. Um, for the, the, the corner route or the seven route, our goal is to push to our stick step and break. Uh, we want to keep our angle high, let the, cor- the QB throw us flat if he needs to based on coverage. Okay. One of the big coaching points that we picked up that is, has made us better in this concept is we teach that number two receiver, shave the shoulder of the inside receiver. I used to be big on, um, or excuse me, shave the shoulder of the overhang defender. So I used to be big on telling those guys, hey, if if he's head up on you, we're going to inside stem and then get back out because I didn't want him getting pushed out into the outside route. And as a result, when you do that, they don't ever get back into the window. But if you're sitting there and you're playing like a quarters team where that apex defender is head up or maybe slightly on the you know, on the shoulder of that inside receiver, as you attack that overhang, if you work through his shoulder, you're slowing him down from getting to the outside, to the wit, which is the first read in our progression. So we we really try to talk about it's okay to invite contact right there. And if he disappears and leaves right now, when you come out of your break, your head needs to be around. Um, and And, you know, typically you're safe telling them, Hey, if that overhang leaves right now and he's buzzing to the flat right now, well, he's the flat player. They've probably got some deep covered shell behind him. So when you hit the stick step, you snap your head and expect the quarterback to throw you flat uh, because you probably have some type of a a soft umbrella um, on top of the concept. So just kind of to give you an example, so we're left hash right here. We're in one of our 11P formations. Um, it's, It's a heavy run formation for us. Um, typically you can see we're getting a heavy box right here. Um, they're, they're trying to play some games with the overhang here. And so we're going to take this, this outside receiver. He's cut his split down, and we're going to work that witch route. So we should be aiming about a yard outside of his hip. As we hit, we should hinge our, our chest to the cue, and then we're going to work outside. Our inside receiver doesn't have any defender to work through, so he's going to hit his sixth step. Think high, quarterback should throw me, uh, throw me flat if he needs to. Quarterback sees tight coverage right away, probably thinking he's going to end up hitting the seven route. But as soon as the ball snapped the corner, plays a bail technique, and you can see with our stem on the route that he loses us immediately. So as as our outside receiver hits his depth shows his numbers, works to the sideline, doesn't take a great throw by the quarterback. It is not great protection. But the Q sees it. He's able to get it out. It's a fairly easy throw and catch. And, again, it keeps us on schedule, um, gives us a a pretty easy gain, and makes the next down distance pretty manageable. So same game here. Overhang has walked out now. He is over number two. They're showing a softer cushion outside of number one and he's going to come down late and he is going to now try to squat and play a cloud technique on that outside route and I wish our camera work was a little bit better here but as that corner squats on the outside receiver our slot works right through the outside shoulder of the overhang and as he snaps his route he's recognized that the corner has stayed flat I can pause it here you can see the corner has stayed on the underneath route, so he naturally bends. The quarterback is able to find him, and it's an, it's a you know it's a second and eleven call right here that results in an easy first down for us. Keeps the drive moving. Again, we we move the launch point. We keep the quarterback upright, and he makes a nice throw and catch um, on the run. Okay, we can also run this out of true three by one formations where we're not leaving our tight end or H back in to be a part of the protection. So when we do this, what we really want to teach is, is we call it a 10 yard out route, but we really tell him we probably should give it another name quite honestly, because what we really want him to do is find 10 yards and work the grass. And last year you can see it on film is we did a poor job of being patient. We would round that thing and sometimes round it early and end up 
in the picture almost with the outside route. So we want to really fight for our depth and be patient as we work out. And if we find a hole, we want to sit and find that hole. From a quarterback standpoint, nothing changes about his progression. Um, he just now has this third option other than just his feet to, to move the sticks. Okay. So here we're true Tim P presentation right here. We don't quite reduce it as much right here as, as we do uh, sometimes in our 11 P stuff. Um, going to the right, especially quarterback, feels like he can make this throw. So we try not to make it look identical all the time as far as our alignment and spacing goes. We want the defense to have to work a little bit and not just be able to trigger versus uh, versus certain looks. So here we go again. The, the outside receiver takes his outside stem. You see he sticks his foot in the ground. But the QB knows pre-snap, he can tell right here. He knows he's about to get a shell coverage where that corner is going to bail. They're going to rotate into, into you know, some version of a, a deeper match or cover three. So he's able to get to, get this out of his hands in a hurry. He's, he is schooled up on film and throughout practice this week. You can see the Q, one, two, three. Arm is moving. I'd like for it to be maybe just a hair quicker. But it's an accurate throw right now. And now we've put it in the hands of, of a skilled player in space, right? He's able – this is a third and four. We just completed a six-yard pass. Um, he makes the first guy miss, gets forward, picks up extra yards, and again, we're able to keep the sticks moving. But let me go back. If you look again, you look at the other routes, you see the the seven route, I, he kind of keeps this skinny. He doesn't actually break on his post. I think he just feels like he's covered. He really would be open if he were to go ahead and hit a seven right here, but it's a bust from a young receiver. Now, you see the number three shaves through the shoulder, Rounds it a little bit early, but if what we what we find is if we get this defender dropping here and not being collision heavy, we find a nice window to sit before we get to him because as the pocket moves, the coverage is going to move. It tends to expand. Here he gets absorbed by contact. The kid does a nice job playing it. But what we see from a lot of teams as they match things out, and they get into their drops as, as the queue expands, they expand, and we can find a nice little window inside of that curl defender uh, to, to, to complete this ball. Okay, give you a, a little bit different look right here. So now we're again, same game actually, still in three by one. The coverage shell looks a little different. They've walked this Viper out a little bit. The corner is showing like he is going to play down. Plays that bell technique. Again, easy read for the QB. Great job by the outside receiver. He pushes his stem, works to the sideline, gives himself some space. First and 10 call, um, you know, late in the game right here, fairly late in the game right here. First and 10, easy throw and catch. Turns into, you know, a, a big play for us. Gets us down in the red zone and, and really kind of keeps the offense moving. Again, if you look at the number three receiver right here, okay, he rounds it too early. Again, he almost rounds that thing at six yards. It was really kind of one of his bigger problems was we trying to get him to understand where he is in the progression, how he has to be deeper. But if he pushes to 10, as this defender works out, if we're able to threaten this safety with some vertical presence and get him to play deeper, we are going to create a natural window for us to potentially throw that football. And that's what we want to really attack when we add the third, uh, third player to that concept. Okay. Uh, Frisco is, is off of Waco. It's just another way for us to kind of protect the same concept, get guys to the same landmarks, let the quarterback, um, uh, you know, let him identify the coverage and make the same throw, get them to the same landmarks. So now we've really just kind of, flip responsibilities a little bit now we can stack guys or even put the h slightly outside of the z here and still get the out the you know the number one guy on the out route um but frisco for us again now we're a corner and then out route okay so the um the seven route now is by the, by the outside receiver or the receiver we have on the line of scrimmage if we're in some type of a uh, cluster or a snag or excuse me a stack or anything like that um, then 
He's now going to push forward. It's very much like we tell the seven earlier, right? If you've got a corner on you that is trying to be physical, you just run through his chest. And if he turns and bails with you, then he's got his eyes off the of number two. And then we get the ball in the flat, which is right, uh, right where we want it. So great ways to run this um, in particular um, off of motion out of some, some kind of, um, you know, slightly compressed set. And, and do some different things. But again, it's easy read, it's easy throw, and it's continuity for the quarterback. Okay. Um, here you see we, we, we condense the formation. We actually go two by two right here. So we're going to put the backside guy on the drag here. The uh, tight end is going to stay backside in protection. Tailback will be front side in protection. So we're going to work to his outside hip and a push and break, and we're going to go right now, and we're going to try to outrun that Viper. And the cue knows right now, as long as we're getting the corner that's playing with man eyes, and we're getting this this man-to-man -man intent from this corner, and it's a team through game plan. We knew it's what we should expect, right? Um, that he knows right now, man, I'm going to try to let my athlete outrun that Viper of safety, whoever tries to cover him, and I'm going to put it on him right now. Outside receiver does a nice job getting in his break and then getting out of it right now. I'd like for him to keep his angle a little bit taller probably. Um, but here again, Q knows where the ball is going to go. Get it to a kid. Again, this is a, a first and 10. It may even be a P and 10 uh, call right here in this. We make a nice, easy throw. Um, he's able to, to kind of get through the first arm tackle and turn it into a nice little explosive there, get us across midfield. Um, just on a very simple – throw and catch that gives our young quarterback a lot of confidence, right? We like to stack these guys. Um, we'll play some games where, again, you know, you start getting into stacks and things like that and, and, and snug alignment by those outside receivers. And coverage looks can sometimes become predictable. You get them into, you know, I.O. situations or, or different combos, and it gives you an opportunity, again, for the quarterback to isolate his read um, and, and to know, you know, very quickly where to go with the football and give him a, a highly efficient uh, concept, okay? Same thing, we can motion from a two-by-two two into a stack. We can hit it with after the motion stops. We can snap it before the motion gets set, you know. Um, a lot of times, like the game plan that I pulled this install from, we told him, we said, hey, we're going to snap it quick. We're not going to get ourselves set. Um, and we are going to use our speed to get you to the flat um, and, and try to out leverage any type of a flat defender. So here we are going left right here. We're a two by two. We kind of compressed in the boundary side right here. We're going to bring the drag from the back side right here. But we're going to motion one of our faster players around, let him use his speed right there, get it in the flat. They do not do a great job handling the motion right here. Uh, they get a little off on what's going on, and part of that is because we do off the same motion show some vertical concepts, and they know they've got to protect against those vertical switch releases and different things. So those things, again, they complement each other, right? But we're able to get the quarterback a very simple throw, um, let him turn it up, you know, um, doesn't do a great job finishing the run right there, but um, from a first and ten, we move the sticks, and we're still rocking and rolling. Young quarterback's got a lot of confidence right now and, and knows where to go, okay? Same game later in the drive. I actually showed you one of the three-by-one clips from this same game earlier. Here we actually start with a bunch set to our left, and we almost botch our motion here. Uh, but we first what we do is we actually trade our tight end over, and we let him get set. Then we bring our H behind him. We let him hit the ground running. So we build our protection by adding the extra hat to that side, and we completely flip the coverage string um, for the defense. You know, you can see as the tight end comes over, the safety starting to go ahead and invert. Now we add the third defender, that backside safety is, is starting to recognize it, probably late getting over right there. And so now, because they roll safety right here, they roll coverage to our motion, we get this cover three look. Our outside receiver probably could take it another step or so vertical, but he knows with the cushion that he's getting from the corner, I can go back, he knows with this cushion he's getting, I'm about to get this thing thrown flat. I roll out of it right now. 
It's a great throw by the quarterback because, again, we drill these things. They're in our game plans every week. We're going to be able to make these two throws right here. But he gets it out right now. Good time. Gives it to the kid. Uh, again, first and 10, pick up a solid gain and, uh, and keep things moving right there. Okay. Here we are, playoff game uh, against Grayson. We bury three by one into the boundary, um, a true open set, not really a bump set. Now, again, we're going to motion our slot across. This is a third and 10 in the red zone. I already have been told that, um, you know, hey, if we, if we don't get it, you got four right here. So I don't, I don't need to get a full 10 right here. I want to give myself a chance to get 10, right? But if I can just give myself in a good situation to convert on fourth, if I get the opportunity, then that's what I'm going to do. So we bring the, bring the slot across. Again, easy read for the quarterback, identify the flat defender, get it to an athlete in space. And uh, on a third and 10 right here, he makes a, an easy catch, easy throw and catch, uh, makes the first defender miss. He's able to get north enough before they catch him from the backside and converts and gets us down low um, in the red zone. So, you know, talk about some of the different ways that we have done it um, in the past few years is uh, we, we have, you know, we've used it in 12 P presentations where we've protected off the backside with the tight end. If you like throwback screens and things of that nature, it's a great way to get to those throwback screens. Um, if you've shown this enough, teams are going to start playing your sprint out, right? And so you might build an opportunity for something uh, you know, on the back door. Uh, same deal, we've done it out of 12 P where we've actually uh, used a boot action and brought the drag into the equation. Um, equally as effective. The, the big thing I would say is you really got to talk to all of your kids um, about just understanding the difference between sprint out and boot and and, and the difference in, in their, their urgency, right? Because they can be a little bit slower um, because our quarterback should be doing a good job of, of protecting himself uh, with his play fake. Uh, we've used 11P uh, nub trips uh, to get to the same concept. Um, again, give him that, that same third third receiver. Um, and then, you know, the, the few times we have used this as a drop back, it's been as a compressed set. We will give him either Waco or Frisco to one side and typically tag and bring drive or even Y cross from the back side. And we can just use it with our drop back protection, make it a pure, you know, progression read. Um, however you, you teach that concept is very easy to build in. Um, and whether we're using Waco on the front side or Frisco on the front side is all about what we think is best going to manipulate or attack the coverage, um, that, that we're seeing from our opponent, you know, again, protecting the concept, um, you know, throwback screens, uh, tight end leaks where you're setting the edge with a guy and he leaks back late. Um, always uh, fun additions. Kids love having those type of things in the playbook. Um, one of the things that we started to carry is as teams started seeing so much, um, Frisco especially, we started carrying curl wheel as well. You would get those flat defenders that go right now to hug the hip of the um, – of, of the out route as he works out and you get those corners bailing out of there. So we'd push, come back on that curl and, and we're looking curl right now. And if the corner drives the curl, then we feel like we've gained leverage on the flat defender and we're turning up the sideline, getting into the wheel route. Um, if you run sprint draw, um, you know, I, I know for a while when Malzahn was at Auburn, um, they did a lot of this type of sprint out stuff. And they had a great sprint draw that, that they used to run as a big part of what they did. Um, and so if you run a sprint draw, obviously it's another way to protect the concept. You get linebackers flowing. You're starting to get edge pressure. Guys getting upfield and you come back and divide them the other way uh, off of your sprint draw. And then, you know, I've seen teams have success throwing tunnel back the other direction. Um, in my experience, it's hard to sprint one direction and throw backside tunnel um, unless you have a tall quarterback that can see over the trash and he has a target that he can see to get the ball to. Um, and, and that, you know, the height at the quarterback position has not been something that we've had a lot of. Um, but in the past, when we've had the kid tall enough to see through the trash, um, that is a great option. 
in a great way uh, to, to protect these concepts. So, um, you know, if anybody actually got anything from this, if you have any questions, um, I put my Twitter on there. Uh, people are, are welcome to, to hit me up on there. I'll give them my email address. Um, you can find me, I'm sure, on Hillgrove's website. And um, I'm more than willing to share. Um, I've always been blessed and fortunate and, and had a lot of people that have, have poured into me and my knowledge of the game, and I try to pay back as much as I can. Coach, it was great, man. Um, love to sprint, love smash, put them together. It's a good deal, man. And, you know, what people don't that don't know you might not realize, you was a defense coach. I, I, I did. I spent my time on defense. Um, I had, had, had a couple of good defenses. Yeah, you did. And um, so I, I that that is that is I tell young coaches all the time. If you think you're a wide receiver coach or you think you're a DB coach or whatever, your boss comes to you and says, "Hey, I, I need you to coach the other side of the ball. Are you open to it?" The answer is yes. Absolutely. I learned. You know, I, I grew up as an offensive guy. That that, that was where my whole. I'm gonna I'm gonna be an offensive coach. I'm gonna be an O line coach or a quarterback coach. Um, and, and when I needed to move to defense, I jumped at it. Um, and, and I learned so much about the game. It helped me as a defensive coach, looking at it through an offensive lens. And as I learned more about coaching defense, it has really helped me now take that, that, that approach when I'm looking at, at, at defenses right. and looking at the way they structure and, and trying to figure out, Hey, what's their adjustment going to be if I can get them on this? Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, that, that's, it's a I big tell young there. coaches that all the time. Yeah. It is, man. Yeah, absolutely. And if you and if you want to wear the crown, you know, if you want to be a head coach and you want to wear the crown, you um, got no, you, got you no can't problem. be a one trick pony. Yep, that's a mistake people are making. Um, I wouldn't get pigeonholed in anything. You know, yeah, for sure. Not. Just try to be a you're either football coach or you're not. Yep. You know, <laughs> and um, the game's the same on both sides. You just know the other piece of it. So defensive guys watch this, trying to figure out how to stop smash. You know. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Coach, I appreciate it, man. You always bring some good stuff, man. Practical, easy to understand. Really do appreciate it. And hope, um, hope you have a good year, man. I'll be pulling for you. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Take care. You too.